our second go round on blessed are they that <clears throat> mourn Matthew 5 verse 4 blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted and um, <clears throat> again we we think differently we look at these things differently we look at it according to our life we look at it according to the way normal people live on the earth and and we think you know it is not a blessing to mourn and um, uh, really it's not even the way that most people want to live <clears throat> but Jesus said blessed are they that mourn blessed are you when you are persecuted blessed are the poor in spirit blessed all of it not we would th we could think okay this is um, uh, gentle jesus meek and mild and he's just trying to get us to be humble or trying to get us to, but it's not it this is all relating to his very nature and the very nature that took him to the cross and the very nature that that won the victory in the darkness and in the death and in the rejection it's the nature that won the victory and that will will yet do that through his body for we bear about in our body the dying of the lord jesus that the life also of jesus may be made manifest in our mortal flesh and it is uh, it is a spirit it is an understanding of jesus's way i mean you know it is it is the way of the lamb it is the way of not just affecting change it is the way of glorifying the father through the son through the lamb through his son his self-giving son that glorified him <clears throat> so i wrote people who think of gaining happiness would never go the way of choosing mourning and that's just a fact they just wouldn't you know they don't want to go there um, uh, and I've said this before, but we think differently. We think blessed are they that are comforted. We hurry through the brokenness. We hurry through it. And we don't let the Holy Spirit show us the end for which he initiated it in the first place. Um, to the average person, the Beatitudes are no way to live. We want strength and we want victory. <clears throat> but you know, in... Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, as it goes through there, it begins to talk about the power of God is the cross. Uh, in the second chapter, Paul says, I'm determined not to know anything among you but Christ and him crucified. And, um, and in that first chapter, after he mentions it in relationship to Jesus, he says, for you see your calling, brethren. He's talking about the weakness of God is stronger than men and the death of Christ in that weakness is, is strength. It's not, just, um, it's not just God is so strong that even when he's weak, it's strong. It is power in weakness. It is power in the lamb. Um, and then it goes on to, well, it says before that, it says that the, um, the world by wisdom knew not God, and in the, in the wisdom of God, he made foolish the wisdom of men. Where is the scribe? Where is the this and that, the disputer of this age? <clears throat> but Jesus looks at our strengths as acts of weakness, meaning that we're, we're, we think we're strong and he says why are you so weak that you have to resort to this kind of stuff um, jesus looks at our strengths as acts of weakness out from a weak constitution and from weak mindedness <clears throat> that's what he sees our um, blustering reactions and our bellowings that produce nothing and that are really a shame around the throne because all are worshiping the lamb. <clears throat> I mean, they're a disgrace around the throne <clears throat> because they are saying, worthy is the lamb that was slain. See, there's another example. They could have said, 
Worthy is the lamb that rose and defeated all enemies. He defeated the enemies in his death. By death, he destroyed him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Uh, know ye not? No, so what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Know ye not? He that is dead. And then what is it? Romans 6, 7. He that is dead is freed from sin. And the victory is not just um, a work that Jesus did on the cross. The victory is the lamb and the selflessness of his nature and the beauty of that. And that's the, that's, that's, for me, that's one of the keys. <clears throat> there had to come a day for me <clears throat> when I quit seeing these things in terms of theology and deep truths and mysteries and all this stuff. And I had to see, I had to be able to behold the lamb in the beauty of this way that his, his nature and to call that beauty. There is no beauty, outward beauty, the kind of beauty we're looking for, that we should desire him. But I had to, I had to come in my heart and say, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And I came to it, and I'm yet coming to it. And when I speak of the lamb, when I speak of of this nature, I speak of it in terms of what I love. Because, I mean, because if you don't love this nature, when you get in the opportunity to <clears throat> lie your way out of something or get, get your way by manipulating or doing something else, you'll do it. You'll do what you love, you know? You will do what you love and most of us love ourselves. <laughs> so, guess what? I mean, that's, Everyone knows that. There's no revelation in that, but um, Jesus put it slightly different. He said, um, the, your, where your treasure lies, there will your heart be also. Your treasure. And um, uh, I, I treasure the lamb enough that I mourn when I miss his nature when I let something else come out of me, when I release something that's not him, I mourn and I do not want to go that way. I don't want to live that way. I don't want that to come out of me. I would like this to be a vessel for him. And therefore, his nature, therefore, I'm his hands extended, I'm his feet and, and that sort of thing. And, and so, um, you know, I, I, I'm sure most of you don't remember, but just before the conference this past year in November, there was a tragic, horrible situation that happened that was actually nothing short of just me really responding outside of the lamb. And it devastated me, and it still devastates me to this day. I have not got over the brokenness of it. And I, you know, I just want to release him to people and in this case it was to one of my family members that you know you go well they're family so you know you can i don't know you've there's a um i forget what the term is but when you're more endeared when you're closer then you feel more freedom to take somebody's head off or something and uh <clears throat> anyway so um uh, I, I want to read this statement again, but Jesus looks at our strengths as acts of weakness. And if we ever saw that, we would stop it. Uh, out, we think that those acts of weakness are out, or, or he thinks that those acts of weakness are out from a weak constitution and from weak mindedness. We see them as the way to win, to be better, but not just better, but better than others. We see using these things to step on someone else's head to get somewhere to, to, to you know. You can't work your way up into Jesus' heart that way. <laughs> and you can't work your way into Jesus' heart either. You, you can only have his heart formed in you and then his nature will come with that because that's what being conformed, that's, that's the ones he shows his face to. That's what he says. You'll be changed 
into that same image from glory to glory. Over what? Over what? Over what's the big key? Your heart. When your heart turns as a bride, as, lo as you love Jesus and you love his nature and you really behold that as beautiful. Behold my scars and go, oh my God, and they're just so precious to you. They're not ugly at all. And, and, every, and Paul said, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. And you just see that, you know. You would just go, you did that all because of Jesus. And your heart for him and the nature of him in you to lay down your life for others. And you just go, that's just, you know, that's what makes heaven beautiful. You know, because it's not just one lamb there. It is a bride and he's clothed in her. And you can't imagine what that must be like for the lamb to have the new Jerusalem, the wife, the, the bride of the lamb, enfolding him and being with him. Um, and not just being in there, like I have Jesus in me, but lamb nature enthroned in you. Lord, I mean, we, we're, we're scurrying, trying to get that. But if we would forget about us getting that and just go after the lamb, just love him, just find him, just want to conform to him, all of that falls into place. It's not a work. It's not something you, you attain to in the sense of working toward it. It's something when the heart turns to the Lord. And it is, it is, it's, it's, well, I, you know, I shared this Sunday night along these lines. And if you weren't here, I would really suggest that you get a, a copy of it because it was from the Lord and it was trying to be an explanation to help us to better see these things scripturally, but to see them from the heart of the Lord and not just as scriptural truth or something. Um, so we see them as ways to win, to be better, but not just better, but better than others. And I have all those in that capitals, better than others. To him, precious are the poorly esteemed. It's okay. It's not a shame. You, you don't have to be ashamed. You can be with the Lord and the heart of the Lord in it. And then I'd mentioned this earlier, blessed not just for any mourners. This blessedness is not just for anyone who mourns. There are those who weep and mourn because the person they wanted didn't want them. You know, I, I think I mentioned when I was in, I don't know, see when it was third grade. My little heart had a little crush on this girl. She was so cute. Got a little crush on her. And when I approached her and tried to whatever hook up, she basically said she wasn't interested. And I actually cried. And there was a Beatles song at that time, one of the early Beatles songs, and John was singing it, and he says, is it for her or myself that I cry? Was I crying for her or was I crying for myself? Because I feel rejected. A lot of times our, our tears are for ourselves. They're for ourselves. We have pity for ourselves. <clears throat> um, or the people at work who should have seen our value but never treated us with respect. You know, or at church or in ministry, someone should have seen my value. You know, wouldn't it be better if the Father saw Christ? the lamb in you as your value and you didn't have to go through all of that. And you could just, you could bear the stripes joyfully for them. And then I put down, there's a sorrow of discontent. 
<laughs> I don't think that's blessed are they that mourn. You know, we're just discontented. I was uh, also sharing with somebody, I think, in Ireland, or and they were talking about someone who just really was having a hard time on their job. And, and I said, you know, sometimes we, we don't like somebody on our job and we say something we shouldn't say. And we start a ball rolling that just gets, it's like a snowball rolling down the hill. It just picks up momentum and before too long, it is untenable, it is unlivable on that job, but you started that ball rolling, you know, and maybe, <clears throat> maybe you don't remember, but it was because of reacting or smarting off or, or getting prideful and saying, well, I, I don't, I didn't do that or, you know, and you, you say, well, these are getting into minute areas. Shouldn't Christ fill every part? Doesn't the scripture say that Christ may be all and in all? <laughs> I mean, this, this, no matter how far we are from that, that should be our desire. That should be our, Paul said, I press towards the mark of the prize, the high calling in Christ. <clears throat> they mourn at the calamities of life brought on by their own sin or failure to put Jesus first. You know, got in a situation, didn't put Jesus first. Things started swirling out of control, and we never remember that. It's like, it's, it's like the, <clears throat> the, as I said, in Ireland uh, for the women's meeting, the second half of the uh, portion while we're there, um, I was sharing on Deborah, and, um, uh, uh, and it begins with, uh, and Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord allowed uh, Jabin, uh, king of the Canaanites, to come and to afflict them. And uh, so then they cry unto the Lord. The Lord raises up Deborah and, and uh, Barak and, and uh, uh, Jael, all of this in conjunction, <clears throat> and the victory is won. And at the end, Deborah says, the Lord avenged us. And I thought, how quickly we turn this situation in our mind and we don't see it as we were wrong. We were dead wrong and these people came on us and this circumstance happened only because we're wrong. But we get in it and we get into such a turmoil that we have to villainize somebody. And once we do that in our minds, then anything that happens to them is God avenging me. That's what's going on. That's, that's what's, why that's happened. And how many times have we said that when in reality, you, you know, the Lamb of God laid his life down for you and me one more time when we didn't deserve it and we never see the Lamb. We just see God is here to avenge me. And yet, he's got nothing to avenge. You deserve this. You brought this on you. But you're so far off from him that you can't see it anymore. <clears throat> Much of our mourning comes from not having Jesus' mind or nature. And God will not bless that kind of mourning. <clears throat> so let's talk about right worn, uh, mourning. And the reason why I'm reading is because I'm I'd like to get through this morning thing so that next class we can. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Jesus wept over Lazarus. How far they were from truly understanding Jesus in that situation, you know. Uh, but what did really Jesus weep over? They're going, oh, you know, Lazarus was his friend. You know, I wrote a song. I can't even remember how it goes right now. Most of you haven't heard it. Maybe none of you have heard it. <laughs> Uh, and it's, uh, and the words literally say, um, why did he cry? Why did Jesus weep? And I said, if he knew that he was going to raise Lazarus, then why would he be weeping over Lazarus? 
those not, aren't the exact words to the song, but it is the, the point at that point. And I hit several different times where Jesus wept and pointed out, I think there's something else going on in his heart. And we're missing the heart of the Lord. Uh, in fact, that's the name of the song. What about his heart? What about his heart? <clears throat> Um, they wanted a miracle. They wanted their brother back. They wanted this and that. Um, and he wanted them to see him in, in this way that I'm, I'm not even going to get into it right now. So I'll just say that, that Jesus mourned in that situation, but he didn't get bitter. And there's mourning, wrong mourning always opens the door to bitterness. It does. Um, and bitterness will destroy you. If you think you're going to have a ministry, it'll destroy your ministry. It'll destroy you. And, and even if we're right and they're wrong, bitterness will destroy us, you know. I wish I could remember an old saying I heard, but it's something like this, uh, um, how foolish it is to not forgive somebody. It's like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. You know? <clears throat> A sorrow that comes by selfless giving. There is sorrow that comes by selfless giving. I put, because we are Christian, because we are married to the Lamb, which one is it? There is, there is selfless giving among Christians, just like there's selfless giving among um, philanthropists or whatever. You know what I'm saying. I mean, it's it, there's giving, and they think it's selfish. And there, there's a giving that Christians think that it's selfish. But a lot of times, our giving is wrongly motivated. There's something behind it. We want to be seen, or we want to be thanked, or we want to be acknowledged, or we want, um, <clears throat> you know, some, there's usually something that we're going to get out. Of. To to actually attain to selfless giving is impossible without being married to the Lamb without the nature of Christ. It's impossible. It is impossible. And we will never, ever attain to that. And if we, uh, the same thing that Deborah did, well, we, God's avenging us. We, if we ever, you know, do a bunch of stuff through what we call selfless giving, but it's not through the Lamb, um, then when we don't get the acknowledgement or are seen as the special person that we are, then it's gonna, it's gonna mess with us. It's gonna dig down deep and it's not gonna go away. It doesn't go away because self is very selfish. <laughs> very selfish. And it just holds on and it won't let go. And you know, the Lord will deal with it. Here's the way the Lord has to deal with you in that sense. You're holding on to it. Oh, stop it. Go ahead, let go. Just let it go. Let it go. And you go, okay. You see, that's, that's all he can do because you won't let him deal with your heart. So he has to let it go, let it go. And you go, okay. You know, and then a week later, you know, and he goes, I told you, let it go. But you, you won't. You know, say, well, here, I put this in your hands, Jesus, but you're like a magician. You go, all of a sudden, it's back in your hand again, you know. And the Lord's not impressed. And he didn't like magic. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And, and uh, I think Kelly read out of 2 Corinthians 4 like 1, wasn't it, last? Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> we're going to look in four and it's the same thing. It's that same spirit. See, Paul started this spirit in second Corinthians chapter one. He did. 
And, and it, this flow continues throughout this book. This book is an amazing book to find Christ crucified in. And in truth, so is 1 Corinthians. Uh, in fact, the whole Bible, you might say. That. <laughs> I'm thinking. <clears throat> okay, now 2 Corinthians 4 and verse... Um, You're familiar with this, though. Verse 10. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of, of Jesus might also be made manifest in our body. For we who live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death works in us, but life in you. And there's a release of life. And it's talking about not a past death with Christ or a past death by Christ, it's talking about his selfless laying down of his life right now, always, bear, always bearing about in the body the dying, ongoing. Uh, and he shows the result of that. If it's truly Christ in selfless giving through you, it will bear fruit to others. <clears throat> All right, so, so uh, let's see. Let's go to 1 Corinthians now. And there's a lot throughout these, but 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and actually verse 10 also. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4, verse 10. <clears throat> we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. Okay, so I want you to see that there is this um, there is this place that he has taken in the Lord to be the counter to them. Most Christians want uh, them to be the ones on top and the other people to look bad. You know, well, you're wrong motivated, and God's going to make you look bad. You're you're worse than wrong motivated. It's not Christ in you. And you're going to only look bad to one person, the father. He's not going to see his son. So, so he's, he's showing this. For we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but, uh, but ye are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. So there's this thing where he's, but he's going down into death for them. And, and he proves that in uh, Philippians 3. Philippians 2, follow it out. It's a perfect picture of Christ crucified. Chapter 3 of Philippians is Paul living Christ crucified. And he follows the same exact pattern. And it's amazing. It's not small or, you know, it's, it's really clear there. <clears throat> Verse um, 11, even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. Okay. So, how bad is it for you right now? <laughs> you know, uh, this, this is pretty bad, and yet he's doing it for Christ. There's, he's doing it for others, and he's doing it by Christ. Let me clarify that. He's not doing it for Christ. He's doing it by Christ. Because that's the only value. The only thing that makes these actions virtuous is the lamb. It's the only thing. And if it's not that... They're not virtuous. You're just a Buddhist monk calling yourself a Christian. <clears throat> um, verse 12, and labor working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we endure it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscarring of all things unto this day. Okay, so <laughs> I don't, you know, <clears throat> uh, You know, I was thinking about this on the plane back from Ireland. I was thinking about um, Jesus. It says Jesus made himself of no reputation. And so I was thinking about Paul, and he says, he says, I am less than the least of all saints. He's not just the least. He's less than the least. He says, I'm the least of all the apostles. And he uses that kind of terminology and and I realized that he's not doing that to act humble. 
He's doing that because that's what Jesus did. He was God and he made himself of no reputation right on down to being hung on a cross as if he was a religious fanatic or something like that. And he did that to make himself of no reputation because he believed that this would produce something. Now I hope y'all can hear that. He believed it to that degree. And so if someone, if someone came up and, and said, oh, Brother Paul, the way that you live, the way you share the word, oh my God, oh my God, it's just really something. And he'd go, you know, he said, I heard this apostle and that one, but you, you know, and he'd go, I am less than the least of them. They are better than me. They are this and that. And taking himself lower and lower because to him it's Christ crucified. To him because what's the point in doing that? Come on, let's kick that let's kick this other mindset up so that we can actually grasp this. If the goal is to get the gospel in all the world and if it is to get people to receive Jesus, then you don't say I'm less than the least. You say I'm the best, baby, and come to Jesus. And Jesus is the best. And here's how, you know. But they went around preaching. Uh, see, the, the common way of dying as, a, as, a, as the worst criminal was on a cross. And they said the Messiah has come. And he's, he's Messiah crucified is the answer. Christ crucified. 1 Corinthians 2 2. Messiah crucified is the answer. And they're going, Are you an idiot? And he's going, I'm less than the least. I'm, I'm, you know. He's not trying to impress them. I came not with excellency of speech and trying to, to convince you of anything, but in fear and trembling and weakness, I, I became less and I got low and I looked like a fool. And people even said, Paul, you know, he does this, but he's, you know, he's weighty and powerful here, but in bodily, da 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 da, he's, you know. And all of this rejection of him based on physical appearance or because he refuses to lift himself up and to say, well, I'm, you know. And when he did finally have to do it to try to reach those people, he said, he said, I, I am a fool for having to say this. And this is real, this is the real thing working in somebody. We know for a fact somebody got it. <laughs> and it worked in them. And God said, I like what you're saying here, buddy. I'm gonna call it the Bible. And he wrote most of the New Testament because he sees his son, he hears his son, he, he, he sees the power of God and weakness going forth through a man who believes this is it. And when they said, prove you're an apostle, he said, I've been beaten, I've been beaten 39 stripes three different times. I've, I've been in prison, I've been this, I've been, that's his proof. I, here's proof that I'm really of God. <laughs> you know, and you tell that to some rich man in Rome and he goes, that's proof that you're, you're a reject. It's proof that you don't know God. God would have saved you. God, you, you know, you're just telling me you don't have God in your life at all. Because look how you're living. Look, look at all this stuff. Look at this. You're nobody. And he's going, yeah, that's right. I'm not. He's not defending himself. Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Son of God himself, opened not his mouth. He didn't say, you know, da-da-da-da. The only, you know, he's, the few things he said were, you know, don't, you know, you better speak up, Pilate said to him. You better speak up. Don't you know I have power? to spare your life or to put you to death? And Jesus finally speaks up because he's speaking up for the Father. You have no power at all except that which be given of you, the Father. All things work together for good. See, but 
Jesus knows this cross thing, and Paul knows this cross thing in all these situations of life, is not the thing to be mourned over. That's the opportunity of, the, of an eternal lifetime. I mean, you know, someone says, well, you have these, these stones in your crown. What if that was not because you preached well or you had a great ministry or did it? What if all of those accounted in relationship to the Lamb? And almost the proof that it is is when the elders take off their crown and throw it at the feet of the Lamb. Going, you're where it all comes from. You're what it's all about. You're the glory of all of this. It's just stupid for us to get these things in the first place. They're getting lower and lower, too. You see? It's always that spirit, but it's that spirit <clears throat> with faith. And that faith is... <clears throat> That faith is that this is the way of God's power and this is the way of accomplishing something. This will do something eternal and everything else is just us doing our thing thinking, you know, well, you know, I'm, I'm standing up for God or I'm standing up for the ministry because this ministry is of God. I mean, <clears throat> well, how, about, how about just sow the ministry into death and, and bring forth more life? What about that? <laughs> and really be happy with that. And just go, well, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. Instead of, oh, I've got oh, to hold on, I've got to fight for something, I've got to, you know. There has to come a time in the heart of the church that we see who it is that we serve, and but more importantly, we see who it is whom we love, and that love will guide you. Love will guide you, and it will guide you after him through whatever means you can get to him. I mean, you know, because, you know, uh, we did the blog thing, and we're almost done here. We did the blog thing <clears throat> yesterday. We were talking about Zacchaeus, and it says Jesus went through Jericho. And Zacchaeus says, it says of Zacchaeus that he wanted to see the Lord who he was. He didn't just want to see the Lord like the crowds, but he couldn't get to him because everybody just wanted to see the Lord. I got to see Jesus when he passed through. See? And he's a, he's a celebrity. And Zacchaeus is going, I want to see him, not just who, you know, who. He appears to. So he climbs up into a, oh yeah, a tree. Remember we read that about the cross being the tree? He climbs up and then he sees Jesus from the tree. And then I was reminded, and Jesus says, come down, I have to abide with you. <laughs> you know, I'm going to abide with you. I'm not just going to visit, pass through, but I'm going to abide with you. And immediately my mind goes to, you know, four, six thousand, or four thousand years earlier, when Joshua, Jesus, same name, just one's Hebrew and one's Greek. Joshua comes through, and they come to Jericho, and just passing through on their way. But this place is going to fall down and crumble and be forgotten. But there's one lady in there that puts a scarlet thread because she met with the people and said, I believe in you guys, and I, I've heard of what the Lord's doing through you. And, and Joshua promised her, you know, put that cord out there. Well, she was a harlot. And Zacchaeus was the head of the tax collectors. In other words, he was a Jew that worked for Rome and ripped off the Jews of their money and gave it to Rome. At that time, tax collectors were worse than harlots. And here you have both scenarios. And in both scenarios, one person out of the whole thing has a heart for the Lord that wants to see him beyond what the crowd is. And it says, Zacchaeus ran ahead. He ran before the crowd. He ran ahead. And because he wanted to see Jesus. He went out, I, I called it going out on a limb for Jesus. <laughs> he ran ahead and he went out and got, went out on a limb for Jesus. 
And we have to realize that there's, Jesus is passing by, as it were. I'm just using this terminology. He's passing by all the time. And how many times is, is he stopping and saying, I see you from the tree too? You know, you seeing me from the tree. I see you from the tree. And I am going to abide with you. And so we're scraping, trying to get hold of Jesus and trying to get something out of the word and trying to have something of life and be da-da-da-da. But our heart still hadn't gone after him. Again, when the heart turns to the Lord, the veil is rent. And then we're changed into that same image from glory to glory. We become after his kind. We become the joy of his heart. Let's pray. Father, we just ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to, to uh, lift up Christ in the way that you want him lifted up. That you order not just the words, but you order our hearts. And that the Spirit of God use these things, not just at a moment during the service, But that we be hunger, hungry enough to, to, if necessary, go back and get it and go over it a hundred times until we get it if we feel, feel there's life there. Or that we would do anything, climb a tree, that we'd, we'd do anything to get to Jesus, but we're, we're so stuck in our religious minds and ways that we, we hold back all the time. Lord, we want you, Jesus. We do. We want you, and we love you. And we ask you, draw us, and we will run. But let us not be afraid of the paths we might have to run to get to you. Thank you for your love, Jesus. Thank you for loving us so much that you took us to the cross, put us to death, and gave us your life. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.